Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe, and it's my pleasure to take a look at Adobe Muse CC for 2015 and the new Typekit integration uh, built in. So let's take a look. Here I am in Muse, and I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my pages, and I'm going to drill down to one of my, um, my uh, text areas here. I'm just going to go make a selection. And of course, the font menu is pretty much the same as it has been in Muse. You typically have three choices of fonts. Uh, starting with the system fonts down at the bottom. These are your fonts that you've got built in that you use for print publishing. But of course, if you use them on the web, they would export as images. So we typically don't use these unless we have to or unless there was a case where we were going to put an image there anyway. Uh, then you have the uh, standard fonts with fallbacks. These are the standard web fonts used across all devices, if not most devices, that will um, work across the board. So in other words, if you choose uh, Helvetica, you know that Helvetica will display across just about any device on the planet. But if you wanted something fancier besides these 11, then you can go up to the web fonts area and you, we've always given you the ability to add web fonts. Well, what's new, and here I'll say don't show me this again, what's new is the, uh, in addition to the 400 plus web fonts that we had before, these were edge web fonts, we've now into, integrated the uh, Typekit web font library. So now you have thousands and thousands of fonts to choose from in addition to the uh, web fonts that you had before, the Edge web fonts. Uh, and for those of you who are, have a Creative Cloud membership, this is great because now you can use in many cases the same fonts that you've been using for your print designs in your web design. Also, of course, I'd you know, be remiss if I didn't remind you that you have the ability to add your own uh, self-hosted web fonts. So if you bought a font from a different foundry or you downloaded one from the web and you want to use that font, uh, if it's a web font, you have the ability to add that in as well. So let's go to the main um, Typekit area here, which I can filter and I can search for uh, specific kinds of properties of a font. So if I'm looking for a thick font, I can go for a thick one. If I'm looking for a handwritten font, um, let's turn off one of those. Handwritten font, I can see those as well. Uh, so that's great for a filter. But what if I'm looking for a font across the board and I just don't know, here, let's turn off the filter here. And I just don't know um, which font I may or may not be looking for. So what I can, do, or which category it may be in. So what I can do is, for example, just search for the word Gothic. And that will show me all the Gothic fonts across the Typekit library, all the Gothic fonts across the Edge web font category, and if I had several self-hosted fonts and there was a Gothic, it would show me those as well. So just even seeing this difference, there are only two Edge web fonts that have Gothic, but there are 37 in the Typekit library. So you have a much bigger range of fonts to choose from uh, when doing your web design work now. So for example, let's say that I choose uh, Alternate Gothic as the font that I want to use. I'm just going to go ahead and choose it, click OK. And now that font will be synced to my uh, copy of Muse. And if I go here, I now have the alternate Gothic number two to use. And it shows me the web edge fonts that I've also used. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose the new one. And that is my new font uh, for this particular headline. So just that easy to now choose from thousands of fonts as part of your Creative Cloud membership. And of course, a part of Adobe Muse CC for 2015. I invite you to check it out. Thank you.